start recording for YouTube. So, today we are going to be covering Taka No Show in his second Jun Yu Show in the top division after a very, you know, not so hot start. He managed to pull ahead in that Yu Show race and then collapse in the last few days. And we're going to see how he did it, and I do think that this is pretty notable because this is going to be the second time we are covering Takano Show specifically. So, the first time we covered him was because of a Fighting Spirit Award from a couple of months ago. Let me go back and check when that was from. That was from uh, November, actually. He got an 11-4 and 4 score from there and then followed that up with a 7-8 and 8. And then a 4 and 11. So, after this 11 and 4 Jun Yu show, he also got himself the Shu Kun Show, which is, uh, I know that's not Fighting Spirit, but I think it is outstanding performance. And uh, his first Keen Boshi. So, really putting up some good numbers here. And now, all that really he needs to do is find some consistency and maybe he can make it to Ozeki because I have said it a lot of times about him in the past. Throughout almost the entire year of uh, 2021, he was Sekiwake for half of it and is still within, you know, that joy of the top division. And even though there is going to be a log jam at the very tippy top of the Banzuke, like we covered in my uh, Banzuke game, or uh, yeah, the Guess the Banzuke game that we did a couple of weeks ago, uh, I feel like there's going to be a space for Takenosho should he continue to get some double-digit wins. And what is up, Sahira? I hope you are uh, here to enjoy some good sumo breakdowns. So, one thing that's notable, and uh, one thing I did mention is not only in the Ted and Fuji breakdown, but in the previous Takanosho breakdown, is how he would always lead with a step to the left, put that left hand into the rib cage of his opponent, and then the right hand goes high to go for the face as an equal attack and defense. Let's see how his style changes in this upcoming Basho. So his first match is up against Onosho, and this match... You wouldn't really think too much of it. It's just, you know, Maegashita 5 versus Maegashita 4. There goes Takanosho charging forward and getting pushed down right off the Tachi Eye. We could watch that at full speed again. And from here, that is just some pretty good agility from Onosho to avoid that charge. And even at... You know, a slower speed. All we're really going to see is Takanosho pushing forward, getting sidestepped, and slapped down. Which, uh, you know, especially after his 4-11, and 11, you start to think, is this the beginning of the end for Takanosho's tenure at the top? But let's see what really happens here. He takes a direct charge. And Onosho is one of those guys that, you know, really loves to go for those direct charges straight through the body and then push forward, which is why he generally succeeds in these, uh, just outside of the joy, but doesn't succeed against the guys in the very top of the division because he's too one-dimensional. Takanosho here counters him pretty well, gets a nice push. Oh, sorry about the artifacting. Gets that hand to the face, like I was talking about earlier. We see Takanosho getting the hand to the face. And this is where he decides to try to follow up with this Supati attack. You know, the windmill attack I always talk about with Abi. Except he's not going to really go that far back with it. He's going to take the step forward. And when he gets Onosho to the side here, we can see that his shoulders are moving, but his feet are not. His feet are still planted. His shoulders and his hips are swinging around, but his feet are firm where they are. So it's just a matter of, you know, not being all there with his attack. Here, he finally does get that step forward, but we can see Onosho is already into his Hatakikomi, which if Takanosho were to have swung his feet around first and then followed up, he would have been able to continue following up and going forward, but because he put himself off balance, now his shoulders, hips, and feet are finally square, but now he's the one getting pushed down. And there really isn't too much 
else to explain other than it was just that big mistake very early in the match. It's just as simple as leaning too far forward and not having your feet underneath you. As you can see right here, he's not getting that step forward. And by the time he finally does, it's not a big enough step to catch him. Because if he did step even bigger to swing around, maybe his foot instead of coming here is up over here, then he can continue the momentum forward and charge through Onosho. But that's not what happens. Oh. Oh. Dakinosho gets slapped down. And, you know, it, it just seems like another day on the Dohyo. Takanosho takes the loss to an Onosho who I thought was going to succeed bigly. But uh, we know what happened to Onosho in this tournament. As we get into the second day where Takanosho is going to be taking on Daiyesho, the Komusubi. And Onosho even starts off 2-0. Look at that. So, Takanosho and Daiyesho are similar, although uh, Daiyesho is much more like Abi in that he has a much higher frontal assault. And Takanosho, even though he does like his uh, Oshizumo, it's more centered and controlled. So, the stylistic difference is what really makes this head-to-head... -head you know, more interesting than others. At this point, they were dead even in their head-to-head, 6-6. -head, six to six. So, coming into this, you know, it was really a coin toss who was going to win. And a coin toss match, is it actually? Leaning forward, Takanosho gets the better charge, parries Daesho, and he wins in the same fashion that he lost yesterday, getting the slap down. So at full speed again, we can see Takanosho getting the better Tachi eye, but when he gets that hand to the face, he smartly retreats, pulls Daesho off balance, and then gets the slap down. So right here, like I said, that right hand going inside, like it usually does. Left hand, we can't really see what it's doing, but Takanosho is much higher than he usually goes. Usually, he, his shoulders are a bit lower. His legs are not nearly this extended. He's usually like leaned back a little more as he's leaning forward. But uh, this time around, he gets the high Tachi eye, and that prevents Daesho from being able to get his high Tsupati to the face. And we can see Daesho, he's already made very uncomfortable in this Tachi eye. And he is blasted up and away. And because of the way Takanosho popped his body up, he's able to kind of recoil back and then use that momentum to keep attacking. Whereas Daesho, he got popped straight up off the Tachi eye. And now he is, you can see he's leaning back and trying to just throw his hands forward, which... That attack does start to work because he starts to land his shots to the face. And right here we see Takanosho kind of stumbling forward again and allowing Daesho to get a grip right up under the face. Now, Takanosho's saving grace right here is this right hand inside because it's it can be used to parry this outside left from Daesho, but let's see how Takanosho recovers from this position, where now Daesho really? seems to be in his comfortable stance. He, he has the fist to the chin, like this is a great freeze frame for, right here. Fist to the chin for Daesho, and Takanosho at this point, you know, he knows he's being stood up, his back is curving back like this, very poor position to be in, so he starts moving away, and he uses this right hand inside to pop up this arm, of Daesho and uses that momentum to throw Daesho off balance and end with the Hataki Komi. Really nice charge. And we'll see it right there. He brings that hand down as a Daesho. You saw it really quickly. Daesho brought his hand up. Takanosho slapped that hand down. And this is where he gets off balance. Takanosho with a nice sidestep coming around this way. You can see him getting that hand on the back of the head. And because of that combination, slash down on the arm, sidestep, he's able to get this swift right hand up to the back of the head. And we can already see Daesho's footing starting to fail him. Like, his feet are in a line, and he needs to really bring this foot around in a big wide step, which if Takanosho just keeps going for the slap down, he's going to get it easily. And that's exactly what happens Daesho here, is even though 
Daesho does recover with that big jump forward, he's still being pulled by Takanosho right here. And we can see Takanosho, he's leaning forward right now off of that Tawada, getting some of that leverage. Nice. And because that step was a little too big for Daesho, he slips forward. The Hatakikomi is completed. And that is so the face, a basically coin flip win for Takanosho's favor. There's the win for Takanosho. So at this point in the tournament, Nob Dog with the it win. is very likely that Takanosho could have been 0 and 2, and we would have thought like, oh no, is he washed? But here, 1 and 1 drags down uh, Daesho to 1 and 1. Not really any cause for concern, not really any like idea of what the coming storm might be, because now we're going to see another match in a similar style, three times in a row against fellow Oshizumo wrestlers, he is going to be going up against Sekiwake Abi, and I need to find it on the schedule. There's another Onosho match versus Tamawashi. Oh, there it is. Or there it was, rather. So, Takanosho versus Abi once again. Similar style-ish. Uh, a similar opponent he just won against yesterday, Daesho, in that both Daesho and Abi really love to go for the face. Abi, however, uh, a lot of people not super confident in him, and he did get that 7 and 8 scoreline because people were, you know, saying, oh, he's finally back to where he was. But that's not really the story that we're covering right now. What uh, we're going to be talking about is that Takanosho. Again, got that coin flip victory yesterday. Could have easily been a loss. Today, the head-to-head -head record was 1-4 and four going into Abi. So, confidence really not in his corner from me or maybe even other fans. But, of course, when you are a super fan of someone, you're always going to love them. But the point I'm trying to make here is that Takanosho, already coming into this match, we know that this match is very losable. And... Uh, you know, we didn't watch Abby's last two matches, but he's one in one as well and already seeing the head to head and people kind of being high on Abby considering his very quick rise and uh, multiple June Yu show. People were in Abby's corner here. So let's watch the full speed here and see if he does anything similar in his match against Daesho, which doesn't happen because Abi doesn't take that full step forward off the Tachi eye, actually catches Takanosho. And right there, it was a very close call at the edge. Takanosho pushing a little too far forward, which is something that we do see pretty often from him. And he manages to step out first. Now, we can watch this again at full speed, but you, one could argue that Takanosho gets the better Tachi Ai here, but I would argue that this was calculated from Abi because he saw what happened yesterday against Daesho and didn't want the same thing to happen to him. Now, what does Abi do here that I'm trying to point out? Well, right off the Tachi Ai, he goes hands to the shoulders and he does not let Takanosho get too deep inside. We can see Abi, he has those arms bent going hands to the shoulders so he can push Takanosho away from him. Takanosho going uh, for not his usual. We can see this right hand is going low and not the usual high hand to the face. So you have to wonder what Takanosho might be doing differently here. And again, because of the way the initial push goes, you might think Abi is on the losing end of this, but this is 100% calculated. Abi pops him up and tries to keep him at arm's length, but Takanosho pushes forward. His hand isn't even on the body over here. You can see that Takanosho's hand is not making full contact with Abi's body. Abi is the one controlling Takanosho. So even though Abi is slipping, he takes the step back. Abi is the one to take the step back here so he can give himself the space to land this Tsupati. And Takanosho, He's not in the wrong for pursuing this, but he's not in a good position. He needs to catch up to him. He isn't fully square because we can see the way his body is twisting. His feet are pointing this way, his hips this way, his shoulders this way. 
Takenosho is all twisted up on himself, and Abi is trying to take advantage of this. Now, Takenosho does eventually get a really wide stance here, but from here, he doesn't have enough leverage to finish Abi because, again, Abi, knowing exactly what he's doing, takes the steps all the way back to the Tawada so he can get the leverage he needs, push off of them, generate the strength up and through his body. So now Takenosho can't finish him off. On top of the fact that Takenosho is at an arm's length away from Abi, whereas we see Abi's arms are bending. Abi has a much longer wingspan than Takenosho, and Abi is taking full advantage of that. He is the one keeping Takenosho at such a large distance that Takenosho, this on paper looks like a good stance to be in, you know, a nice solid wide stance he's fully square at this point but the arms are just not reaching him so abi taking advantage of this we can see right here left hand on the shoulder or on the elbow he's gonna push it this way and try to get the slap out on takanosho right there hopping to the side very gracefully and here if abi were to pursue immediately that's an easy push out from behind but Takenosho, oh, you okay? Yeah, my Takenosho Abby. manages to turn around fast enough. Abi just not fast enough on that pursuit, but Takenosho okay. now turns around and Abi lets him continue to attack forward. I think all of this was planned by Abi. So the entire time, Takenosho, even though he's the one still pushing forward, it's Abi who is in control i think the entire way and we can see him even going for a slap down right here takanosho his head is much further forward than his feet which is not in a position you really want to be in and it's something that takanosho is usually guilty of as well so at this point we can actually see he brings his hips lower and this is something that takanosho needs to do more of as he's pursuing he brings his hips down and squares them so he's not like taking these big wide steps forward. He's not doing that. He's shuffling forward. He's keeping those feet underneath him so he doesn't lean too far forward or be able to let himself get pushed too far backwards. It's an entire body that's moving forward. And that's something you see me Takeumi do a lot. This is something that Takenosho needs to do more of because as we can see, as we get into the end of this match, he leaps forward again, and we can see Takenosho went from having, you know, that good square body to now look at this arc he's making. His head is way too far forward again. His feet are not caught up to the rest of his body, and he puts himself off balance. And Abi, like he did earlier in the match, he's catching himself on the Tawada, getting all that leverage and pressure he needs in the counterattack, and he is going to, even though he's being stood up right now, again, look at Takenosho's footing. Look at Takenosho's body. His body is turned like up like a crescent moon and his toes like that's not stable footing. He's doing the obby thing where he's going up on his tippy toe to try to get as much leverage as possible. But if he had like if this foot was down on the ground, that would just be solid footing. He'd be able to shuffle forward, keep himself square and be able to bring his feet up underneath him. But because he's trying to go for the kill shot right here, right now. He lets his arm get grabbed and pulled by Abi, and we can see in these freeze frames, Abi's feet never touch the ground. Takenosho pulled right on out of the ring, and he steps out first. So from this match, we can definitely see Takenosho has some improving that he needs to do in his own style. He needs to keep those feet underneath him. He needs to, you know try to do better in terms of his own balance because we saw just in that split second he goes from having feet underneath him to his body going forward again like feet underneath body going forward and then his feet were never underneath him again and that is really where he loses a lot of his stability if you don't have your feet underneath you then you're going to just fall forward, and that's exactly how he loses here, and that's almost how he loses to Tedor no Fuji later in the tournament. But right now, at this stage, half of the worst is already out of the way for uh, 
for our boy Takanosho here. So Takanosho suffered four losses in the whole tournament, and those were two of them in the first three days. At this point in the tournament, you know, you see, oh, it's a one and two Takanosho. I keep saying anything can happen. Anything can happen. And certainly anything does happen. But at this point, you know, you see someone start one and two. It does not inspire confidence for them to finish, you know, 13 and two. It's happened before. It could happen again. But will it happen? We don't know at this point. And truthfully, Takanosho is not the person we're all really looking at in this race, especially at one and two. If we want to look at all of the other people at one and two, we have Mi Takeyumi and Takakesho to join him at this stage of the tournament with Shodai at 0 and 3. And of course, Tedano Fuji 2 and 1, Colton Owaka 3 and 0, Tamawashi 3 and 0. So. Already, he's out of the picture right now. Talk, no one is really talking about Takanosho right now at this point in the tournament, except like, you know, the knee jerk. Oh my God, is he finished? Is he donezo? Is he finally out of it? Next up, though, we do see Takanosho versus Tamawashi. Tamawashi, one of those men that I just mentioned. In that Yusho race at 3 and 0. Oh, and knowing about his dominance against Tidano Fuji, that's almost a free win against the Yokozuna, too. <laughs> so, the real question here is, uh, how does Takenosho do against Tamawashi here? In the head-to-head, -head, looking at it, at the time it was 4-2, and two, so... Looking favorable for Takenosho against Tamawashi. And Tamawashi, you know, he has that experience. He does those things that I say he needs to do in order to succeed in his matches. So... Let's see what he does here. Amawashi getting stood up straight away, trying to get that nice Tsupati. It seems to be in full control over Takanosho's body, who survives the onslaught. And now we see Takanosho doing what I said earlier, keeping his feet underneath him as they get into that slow stalemate. Takanosho going for a grip on the belt which is not normally something you see him do tamawashi trying to pull but then he allows himself to get pulled down and takanosho got a really interesting win right there as he bleeds so going back to the very beginning of this fight what happens here is takanosho it seems like since the last time we covered him, he has moved away from trying to go for that right hand high. Because this is the third time in a row he's brought it low. And we can't really see what's going on on the left side. But this is the third torn this is the third match in a row. We see him bring that right hand low. And he doesn't really take a step forward at the Tachi eye. He's just he's not doing this. He's just standing his ground. And he's trying to get the better position with his arms. <laughs> Excuse me. Tamawashi, on the other hand, he is the one to take that step forward, as we can see by his feet over here, and he is the one to get those hands to the face. Now, truthfully, Takanosho throughout the first half of this match looks completely helpless. Like, this right hand, he's trying to use it, and you can see him try to parry here. He brings it up into the shoulder, or I keep mixing up shoulders and elbows for some reason. He brings it up into the elbow of Tamawashi, as Tamawashi now brings his hand really high up into the, uh, the stat block up here. <laughs> but, uh, like, it just looks like Takanosho is the one getting manhandled because now Takanosho finally puts. Oh, well, that's the wrong color. Takanosho finally puts the hand to the chest, but it looked so lazy in the way that it got there. Meanwhile, Tamawashi, he's the one pounding. Bam, bam, bam. So it just looks really lazy from Takanosho here, as, as we see, uh, Tamawashi slaps the arm to the side, and now we can kind of see Tamawashi thinking about moving into the side for the attack. How does Takanosho recover? He leans into it with his shoulder, which I think is pretty smart. Takanosho leaning into that with his shoulder. So it's kind of in a Takeyasu-esque style where he leans the shoulder in, gets a grip on the belt, and that looks like is exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to get a grip on the belt from this position, which is not something we usually see from our boy Takanosho. Or as Tamawashi, 
He seems to favor this position because he's getting a hand around the back. It should be going for the belt, but it's not. And he's using this other hand, right hand down here to go up into the face, and he's going to push Takenosho back and up. And we can see that he's using this left hand not to go for the belt or anything, but to keep the shoulder turned so he can keep the hand to the neck. And Takenosho trying to, you know, get around. He's trying to swing this back foot around. You see him them shuffling around this way. He's trying to swing this foot around so he can square his body again, but he's being kept turned by the left hand of Tamawashi right here, which is like that's some really interesting sumo right there. Tamawashi trying to fight him to the edge right here, and now Takenosho, it looks massive danger. Back foot on the Tawada, but Tamawashi doesn't have the pushing power. So now he resets, allows Takenosho to resquare the shoulders, resquare the hips, resquare the feet, taking a small step so that he can possibly pursue with that left foot once again. And this is where we can kind of see. Takanosho does indeed have that right hand in on the belt, and Tamawashi can't do much to stop it. This is where he starts digging it in right there. You can see the fingers on the belt for Takanosho. And Tamawashi trying to stop this. He doesn't go for, you know, outside left on the belt. He doesn't try to go for a grip on the knot back here, which would give him a lot of leverage. He's trying to counter the inside left or the inside right, by trying to get his own left hand inside to try to put Takenosho's arm in one of those, like, arm breaker holds. Because you can see Takenosho's arm is kind of straightened out. If he bends the elbow the wrong way and, you know, hyperextends it, that's that's kind of what Tamawashi is trying to do right there. But Takenosho holding himself firm. They do stalemate here for just a few seconds, which seems like forever in sumo time. And this is where, again, Takenosho puts that left foot forward. He's re-squaring his body and trying to get this left foot forward so he can get these shoulders down and push Tamawashi back up. Tamawashi here opts to go for the pull, but because of Takenosho's grip on the belt, that helps keep him stable, and that pull doesn't do anything for Tamawashi, and now... Looking at the position here, Tamawashi is the one leaning too far forward. He's got his back shrimped forward, feet down, but shoulders way too far forward. And this is where the perfect position is for Takenosha to go for this pull. And it looks like a very risky pull, too. Like, look at his footing. Look at these feet. He's going to step back here, and then he has to stumble back on this other foot to try to stay afloat. But at this point already, it's a good enough pull that he gets the win. And it was a very nice pull and a little bit of blood for his trouble. So now we're kind of getting an idea of what Takenosho is going for. He's very obviously changing his style. He's very obviously trying to do something different. And in this match, it worked for him. Whether or not it'll work in the next match, we will go ahead and see because his next opponent is Colton Owaka. Let's see now. Uda and Wakamoto Haru. Ori Naoshi. Shimano Umi Tobizaru. Takenosho Colton Owaka. So now at this point, Colton Owaka is fresh off of three straight wins against all of the Ozeki. And then one loss to the Yokozuna. So it's like, okay, sure. One loss to the Yokozuna, that's fine. Colton Owaka is going to keep on steamrolling. And I keep saying, I kept on saying that because I'm trying to, you know, get people to try to win his merchandise. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not what happens here. As we're going to soon see, Takenosho takes advantage of his Kohai here. Getting that inside right, going for a grip around and getting the Yorikiri. So that is definitely not Takenosho's style, and I don't know what the influence might be. You know, it has been six, six months since we've covered Takenosho, so, I mean, this could have been gradual changes that we simply didn't notice, but even coming into this match, seeing how Takenosho wins here, 
He goes forward, switches the grip so he can try to get the inside right on the belt. Colton Waka doesn't know how to handle it. And Takenosho gets a good Yorikiri. So very early on from the Tachi eye, we can see Takenosho going low. He actually gets the step forward this time. He doesn't do the thing that he did in the previous four matches. He actually takes his foot, steps it forward and uses his body to try to get the good push and try to get a favorable. Well, I guess he knows from the very onset that he's going for a Yotsu game. So he tries to get this hand on the belt immediately, not going to work, so he's going to switch it inside, and it does work from there. Colton Owaka can't do anything to really block that because he is, you know, his uh, left hand up in this armpit, back, shoulder area isn't really getting too much leverage in, whereas at Takenosho, we can see this left hand is going up and high, and I can't really tell if that's pushing the shoulder or if it's pushing, you know, closer to the neck or face. But whatever it's doing, it's getting Takenosho a little bit more wiggle room. Because as we can see here, he is on the retreat a little bit, sliding all the way back. And now, again, in that precarious position where his shoulders are too far forward. But he's using this because he's immediately going to start moving forward. He has the inside right. Colton Owaka doesn't like that. So Colton Owaka is actually going to be the one to initiate the retreat and give Takenosho the room he needs to push forward. He is still trying to get the inside right on the belt, but Colton Owaka trying to counter hand to the face. Not really going to work. Colton Owaka trying to go for a wider stance so he can try to catch himself, but Takenosho just keeps pushing forward. Colton Owaka keeps slipping backwards. Colton Owaka, you know, nearly gets the push over here, and this is something we will see Takenosho fall to later. We can see... Takenosho, in his, you know, attempt to move forward, he's kind of leaning his body this way. So, you know, if I were to make the stick figure of him like this, he's, you know, facing us, but he's leaning this way. So he's actually, you know, looking like this. <laughs> in my best way I can try to draw it out. He's leaning to the right as he's pushing forward, so that leaves him open to be attacked and thrown in that direction as well, which is something we will see later on in this tournament. But here, Colton Owaka doesn't have the strength to go for that throw. As, you know, Takenosho is still pushing forward, and he manages to stay centered enough against Colton Owaka to get the Yorikiri. Now, I would argue that this is inexperience, on Colton Owaka's part, you know, not really knowing how to fight against Takenosho yet because they only do have, you know, that was their uh, third match under their belt against each other. So it could be Colton Owaka not really knowing how to handle it. But uh, this was indeed a solid win from Takenosho, who improves to three and two after his first five matches, which is definitely not a bad position to be in. Moving into day six, we see his opponent is Shodai, who, I mean, at this at this point of the tournament, we're all saying like, oh, wow, this is actually going to be a free win for uh, Takenosho, because Shodai is maximum lol die. Takenosho versus Shodai. Takenosho actually looks taller than Shodai in this shot. Now I need to... Check their stats. Is Takenosho actually taller than Shodai? Oh, hello, Molly. <laughs> Takenosho is 181 centimeters. Shodai is 182. So it's actually Shodai is the taller one, but Takenosho is looking big. Takenosho is looking huge compared to Shodai here. But maybe that's just our perception. Takenosho gets the good push forward, keeping himself centered, not letting himself get thrown to the side as he usually does, and keeps the pursuit perfectly fine. When is the next Bonzuke out? That is a very good question. Let me go ask real quick. The next Bonzuke comes out 
next week, the 27th of June. So during the next Sumo Sunday, where we will probably be covering another one of the June Yusho winners, uh, I will be going over the Banzuka and seeing what happens there. But in this match, I said that we would see it again against uh, Colton Owaka. And we do see a sign of it here, but Takanosho is getting better at not letting himself get thrown to the side like he usually does. Right off the Tachi Eye, Takanosho gets the good charge forward. And again, not really sure what, what the difference is between, you know, day one where he just kind of stood back and let the attack come. And then day six where he's going forward on the attack it could be you know changing his style based on his opponent which is always a great thing to see which means he is learning from the past and wants to make sure he is fully prepared for his opponents but we don't really know what their uh practice regimen is but what we are seeing is now takanosho goes straight for that high right hand and that's something that i just mentioned we weren't seeing he goes straight for the high right hand this time hand to the neck of shodai as he pushes forward, which is like good old Takanosho right here. And it's just a really solid hand to the face. He is leaning forward, but this is a good lean because his feet are not so far behind him that he's going to fall forward on his face. And right here, Shodai does get the grip around the back, which is what I thought Tamawashi was going to do to him the other day. But this is where uh, Takanosho continues to push forward. You can see... And this is something I bring up a lot too. This right knee forward is kind of blocking the progress of Shodai's left leg and kind of keeping Shodai's leg straight. So that footing right there, that aggressive footing, may have given up that left inside on the back of the belt, but it does stand up Shodai long enough for Takanosho to recover, long enough for him to get his own left hand inside. And even though Shodai is pulling that hand up, into his own armpit it's still you know takanosho is lower he is more square but now this is where it's dangerous because shodai is famous for his at the edge antics air quotes where uh he will throw his opponent at the edge of the ring and get the win on the defensive end of sumo but here we see takanosho he keeps his feet wide and now we can see he's not leaning so far forward that he allows himself to get thrown in any direction. We can actually see he's kind of square over himself. He is keeping his stability. And even though we can obviously see the way Shodai, he's twisting his knee and his hips, he's trying to throw Takanosho this way, but it doesn't go. Takanosho withstands the attack. Now Shodai digging in that left hand even further underneath the armpit to get more leverage so he could toss Takanosho that way. Takanosho counters with a nice sidestep, brings those feet back to restabilize. And here we see, again, another throw attempt from Shodai at the edge, but we see huge step forward and blocks himself from being thrown to the side because, you know, he would have been thrown that way. But by getting this leg out as far as he did, it's going to go into Shodai and save himself. So now Shodai's throw becomes a Takanosho push right there. We could see that quick trip right behind the leg. And it's unfortunate that I can't go back like frame by frame. But if I do go back just a little bit and try to get that freeze frame, we can see that big wide right foot forward actually trips Shodai just enough right here. Perfect freeze frame on this. Trips Shodai just enough to get Shodai off balance keep Takanosho centered and now gets the Yorikiri so now we're seeing okay that was very impressive Takanosho like sure it was against Shodai who very much underperformed this tournament but that was a very solid win from Takanosho right there improving to 4 and 2 hmm I'm using a VLC. Let's see. Now, going into day seven, we see, okay, Takanosho, four and two. His opponent of the day is going to be Tobizaru. 
who he has a 6-3 and three head-to-head against. Looking very likely that it's going to be another Takanosha win, but Toby Zadu was 6-1 and one at this point in the tournament. Like, Toby Zadu was one of the guys to beat in the Yusho race. So now, Takanosha, you know, it, we're thinking, does Toby Zadu have what it takes? Does Toby Zadu continue to push forward? And, you know, does he keep doing what he's doing? Toby Zadu being one of my personal favorites, I need to get one of his fan towels. But now we see Takanosho versus something we don't usually see against a smaller opponent. Sure, Takanosho is big, but you know, against a lot of guys that are roughly the same size or even bigger than him, he performs well. Now against a smaller opponent, again, we saw that uh, the head-to-head -head coming into this was a six and three in favor of Takanosho. Toby Zadu, on the other hand, 5-1 and one on the tournament, looking very good so far. Granted, he was going up against middle Maegashira ranks, but still, 5-1 and one is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, we're supposed to watch his full speed first. My bad. But as we saw right off the Tachi Eye, Takanosho gets that really nice first step forward. Getting pushed back, though by the feisty Tobizaru and doesn't let himself get slapped down. On day one, Takanosho got slapped down. On day seven, he does not let himself get slapped down. So we could already see mid Basho improvement. He is already learning. <laughs> the E key moves forward frame by frame, but it doesn't go backwards. Oh, that sucks. You? No. Oh, look at that. It does. Cool, thank you. That's actually really useful. But as we can see, right off this Tachi Eye, Toby Zaru, that left leg is really far back and it kind of worries me, but Takanosho getting that first foot forward gets a good push, but he manages, he is the one, like Abi did to him earlier in the tournament, he is the one to take the step back. He gets slid back, he takes a step back, lets Tobizaru go on the offense a bit, continues to slide back, which, side note, we were complaining about how slippery the Dohyo seemed to be in this tournament. And side note, Takanosho recovers. He doesn't even need the Tawada to recover as uh, Tobizaru continues to bound forward. And now, Takanosho goes on the push. He's walking it forward. That's a very big step, which is usually a risky move. And Tobizaru gets lower and lower to try to stop the charge. And we can see Tobizaru has a really nice stance here. This foot underneath his hips and his shoulders are not too far ahead so that he doesn't get pulled down. This is a really nice defensive stance to stop himself from getting pushed back. Uh, I should make that a little bit. <laughs> Maybe if I can make the, uh, the lines a bit thinner. That might help. But here we see uh, Takanosho is on the push forward and Tobizaru. We can see him going for the slap down here. And this is where Takanosho, again, he learned from earlier in the tournament, brings the feet forward underneath him. Because now look at how stable this stance is. Now this line looks a little too thin, but that's fine. Look at how stable this is. He's not getting pulled down from this position, even though... Tobizaru does have good position on a Katas Kashi. The way uh, Takanosho is turning his body, shifting himself to avoid getting thrown down, it's like textbook avoiding this throw. Hopping forward with both feet so he could keep the feet underneath him, which again is usually a risky move. You don't want to have both feet off of the ground, but... Because of this move, he's able to just continue pushing forward through Tobizaru, leading him out of the ring. And at this point, Takanosho's 5-2. and two. I'm back on the Takanosho train. We're hyped up on the Nobu Dog because at this point, it's Aoyama and Sarano Umi at 6-1 and one in the race. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing that Takanosho has been improving on is... Uh, Usually when he pushes forward for an attack, he would have gotten slapped down and Tobizaru tried it, but he kept his feet underneath him and, you know, had much better pursuit than we've seen in the past. 
Damn, I'm so smart. <laughs> that was me saying that live, noticing that uh, Takenosha has been improving that part of himself. <laughs> Though, I, when you watch so much sumo, you tend to notice that kind of thing. Let's see now. His opponent coming into day eight. An infamous match. Well, not so much infamous as it is uh, an incredible match. The Musubino Ichiban, a match that we have already covered from a different perspective. Teruno Fuji versus Takanosho. Or will tiny penis go away now? And uh, you know we know exactly what happens here, but even before that, I talked about it a lot. There is the fact that uh, Takanosho was. Uh, four and six coming into this head to head, but all of those wins were in January of 2021 and before that. And since then, Teruno Fuji has had Takanosho's number. Takanosho would get close, and Takanosho does usually get the good push, similar to how Daisho and Abi usually abuse Teruno Fuji. Takanosho usually gets the good initial charge, but then he falls at the end because he gets tossed to the side in the way I mentioned earlier in the tournament. Here, however, Takanosho gets that big right hand to the face, getting the double inside, and Takanosho gets the fr frontal force out before Teruno Fuji falls. Or before uh, he falls. So, this match is very fast, but it's everything Takanosho needed to do against the Yokozuna. Bam. Good charge, because we know Tenor no Fuji usually brings those two arms down and inside. Takanosho opts for high and straight to the face. Big right hand straight to the throat. And after that right hand, instead of trying to go for more Tsupati, he immediately goes in for the belt. Immediately goes in for that double inside. And he does not let Tenor no Fuji gain any quarter. He does not give him a breath. So Teruno Fuji tries to go for the throw here like Takanosho would usually fall to. It's not going to work. Teruno Fuji back up on one foot and that's the win right there. But in a universe where Teruno Fuji's foot is in front of the Tawada, we can still see the failings of Takanosho coming in because he gets tossed down to the side like that. I appreciate that, Furious. I'm glad that you enjoy them. Fuji getting blasted backwards. Yeah, Takanosho. going again. If, ta if Teruno Fuji's foot was still inside here, this is a classic Takanosho loss. Where he is... Like, his feet are so far behind him, he doesn't have any balance. Because he's up on his tippy toes trying to... You know, go for just the kill shot at the end here. And Teruno Fuji uses the leverage right here under the elbow to push Takanosho right over to the side because Takanosho, he doesn't have his feet underneath him. Not underneath his hips or his shoulders. He's going for that tippy toe final desperation push, which this time it works. This time it works. This time, it worked. In the past, and maybe the next time, this is not going to work. Because he will fall. Just like this. So, even though Takanosho wins this match, he really needs to have a better game plan when it comes to finishing off Teruno Fuji. Teruno Fuji getting blasted backwards. Takanosho gets it! <laughs> A quick and easy win for the Nobu Dog to earn his place in the Yusho race. But yeah, Takanosho 
Now it's at this point in the tournament that we're saying like, oh, wow, wait a minute, Takanosho. Oh, hi, Molly. Takanosho is making it happen. He just beat the Yokozuna for the first time in a year and a half. What else is he going to do? And it is at this point that he is technically the front runner in the race because Aoyama and Sada no Umi both lost their matches. So now that puts Takanosho on top. And I know this isn't the Takanosho match. I'm trying to find it. Daisho, uh, Takanosho Umi, Takeyumi. Come with him. Head. Here we go. Mitake Yumi, another struggling Ozeki. Takanosho, hot off of his first Kinboshi. What's up, Rhubarb? I'm glad I actually get to catch you in my stream. <laughs> yeah, we see Takanosho. Again, fresh off of his win against the Yokozuna. Going up against the Mitake Yumi fan section. How does Takanosho's improvements help him win this match? Because this is another win by Yori Kiri. Mitake Yumi and Takanosho at the ready. Takanosho gets the hand straight to the face again, and it's just the better charge. Now, again, we don't know what Mitake Yumi may have been struggling with, but this is classic Takanosho. He is adding more. We, we've seen the first week he was trying something different, and now he's going back to what he did. So he's adding more weapons to his arsenal that isn't just the consistent left hand inside to the rib cage, right hand up high. But this is what he goes back to now. Bam. Left hand down and inside to completely shut down this elbow from Mitake Yumi. Right hand up and straight to the face. And from there, Mitake Yumi stood no chance because now his right hand assault is doing nothing. And he is getting pushed up and away, which allows Takanosho the space to come back in, recharge at the chest. And, I mean, it's just good, solid basic Yotsuzumo from here. Hand up under the arm, controlling and grabbing that bicep. Good angle on the charge. He's shuffling his feet forward as he should. It's just solid sumo. No problemo, Mergle. Glad to see you stopping in today, though. We are a little over halfway in covering Takanosho's rise to power. Takanosho right now. Seven and two. What a win. So, you know, after starting off one and two, he's seven and two. That is incredibly good. And he's had like three or four so far, just really short matches where he's won. And well, if you want to include the losses, he's had like six really short matches where it's win or lose within, you know, just a single breath. So the question is how consistent is this new Takanosho going to be? And I don't want to say new Takanosho. I would rather say this evolved Takanosho. Because Takanosho has clearly Takanosho added new weapons to his attack IGI. pattern, but knows exactly when to go for, you know, his tried and true left hand down, right hand up to the face. And he is making it work really well. Next match... He has up against Endo, which is a bit earlier in the match, which Wakamoto Haru is the match before that. Here we see Endo, another veteran similar to Tamawashi, except not as consistent, versus Takanosho. Endo can usually really pull out any kind of win because he is just one of those veterans. How does Takanosho deal with it? Takanosho tries to get the right hand up, but he gets parried by Endo, and he pushes forward for the win. We can see that again at full speed. Takanosho getting parried right off the Tachi eye, but Endo just could not withstand the counterattack, and I'm tr having trouble seeing why. 
Endo taking the charge, Takanosho. I think uh, Takanosho, you know, if we go just fast motion over and over again, Takanosho gets his head underneath, like, the shoulder of Endo, like, right here. He pops up Endo somehow, and Endo just couldn't stop the push from there. Endo taking the charge, Takanosho. Actually getting a good push, stumbling forward, but I think Endo stepped out before. But yeah, that is called the win for Takanosho right there. It is a win by uh, Oshidashi, so frontal push out. What happens right here is Endo perfectly counters the old Takanosho build. Whereas Takanosho likes to get this left hand down and in, and then the right hand up to the face. Endo, he goes even lower. He gets his own right hand inside, and then he uses his left hand to also parry that usual right to the face. Right there, you can kind of see it. His, uh, the way Endo has his arm bent and he is bringing it up to, again, parry this attack. It Endo. stops Takanosho in his tracks. And now, Endo gets the good jump inside. Like, you can see that little bit of hesitation before, like, boom, right to the belt. Because he knew exactly where to put that attack. Now, if he just locks in this grip on the belt, he has a very favorable position, although he does need to swing this right foot around to square himself. This is a very favorable position for Endo. And I can't really say, like, how does Takanosho really recover from this? I can't see what's happening on the right side, you know, through Endo's head. But from what we can tell, Takanosho does a pretty smart move. He wiggles himself backwards and gets this left hand around so he can break the grip on his belt. He can break Endo's grip by putting him in this arm breaker grip. And now that we can see Endo's right hand or left hand is out here doing nothing, we can kind of surmise that uh, Takanosho's left arm is down inside blocking or down inside trying to go for the belt. So from here, Takanosho keeps his distance, keeping Endo away from the belt and stumbles forward right there. So I think what might be happening is Endo, seeing the stumble forward, tries to go for a pulling attack. But it looks more like Takanosho kind of uses that stumble forward right here to continue the momentum forward and just squares himself perfectly. He's perfectly square against an Endo who just doesn't seem strong enough to overcome the attack he just gets pushed forward completely and you know i even say in the live cast takanosho stumbles forward because that's really all it is he just bumbles forward through this match and it just happens to be through endo and uh even though he gets the hand down endo stepped out first getting a good push stumbling forward but and endo that just happens to be another win for takanosho a close win and there is a mono e that is indeed favored in Takanosho. So looking at the match, well, we might be able to... Uh, it's not the full replay from Abema. So looking, looking at the match full speed again, it kind of just looks like a comedy of errors in favor of Takanosho. Like, it looks like Endo started off much stronger than Takanosho, but when Takanosho stumbled, that bumped Endo in a weird way. And Endo just couldn't recover from it, which is strange. But, you know, not everything is going to be perfectly calculated in sumo. Like, this just possibly could have been, I tripped into the win, you know? And sometimes, like I mentioned during the Teterno Fuji uh, cover video, like, sometimes you're just stronger than the other guy, and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing they can do. You just win because you're stronger. In a situation like this, you know, he slipped into you, you got knocked off balance, and you just couldn't recover. It happens, you know? <laughs> Hello, Crazy TV. Welcome to the stream. So, I mean, this match... Not really much to break down, not really anything impressive happening here. 
it just looks like Takenosho pushed forward for an okay win. <laughs> but a win is a win, and he has Akachi Koshi on day 10, and he is tied for first against Ichi Yamamoto going into day 11. And on this day, he fights Ho Shoryu. Cool. I'm gonna watch this guy just kick the crap out of people. Let's see. Ho Shoryu is the Komusubi. Oh, there it is. Alrighty. What's up, Rube? How you doing? So let's see. His head to head against Ho Shoryu is not in his favor, actually. It was 1 and 3 at this point. So, Takanosho, you know, we might be thinking whole shoulder was no slouch. Maybe this is going to be the end of his, you know, his winning run, his win streak. Takanosho did lose twice in the first three days, and he has been hot since then. So, I mean, you never know what could happen. Of course, you know, we got to overhype it for the broadcast and be like, yes, he's going to win it all. He's going to go undefeated in 13 and 2. But even then, like I was mentioning uh, during the Teru no Fuji video, some people were even speculating there could be an 11 and 4 Yu show and that even whole Shoryu could be in the race if he wins this match. So not a lot of confidence in Takanosho to stay on top. Obviously, no confidence in Ichi Yamamoto to stay on top. But uh, let's just see what happens in this match to maybe change some minds. Takenosho, the first to touch Takenosho going for that hand straight to the belt on the inside right, which again is not something we usually see from him. This new attack added to his repertoire. Locked into Yotsuzumo against Ho Shoryu, who is very good at Yotsuzumo, countering the trip attempt and crushing Ho Shoryu out of the ring. Now... The reason why this is kind of significant is because that trip attempt is a double-edged sword. You either get it or you don't. You either get the trip and you win, or you don't get the trip and your likelihood of losing off of that attempt is very high. In the same way that going for the leg sweep is like a very risky win or lose type of tactic, so is going for that leg trip. And we see it in full force right here. Hoshoryu trying to go for his signature move, kind of. Takanosho, ah, this camera angle sucks, but we can see very clearly Takanosho, he doesn't go hand to the face. He goes hand straight to the belt. And knowing that Hoshoryu is very good in the Yotsuzumo, I think it's very surprising that Takanosho would opt into a Yotsuzumo match. Like, again, this is not something we usually see from Takanosho, so the fact that he's going for it is pretty exciting, I think. Great charge and then from here, he has a good push forward. We couldn't really see his footing, but from here we can see this is very standard Oshizumo kind of position. Like, sure, he doesn't have the outside left on the belt because it's being blocked by the inside right of whole Shoryu. But we can very clearly see, like, this is a favorable... If you are any Yotsuzuma, like, block out the names, block out the colors of the belts, block out the faces, you would say that the guy on the right is winning, like, 99 times out of 100. He is just in a favorable position here. And even though whole Shoryu tries to turn him around, you can see Takanosho tried to reach for the belt right there, and now Takanosho is doing the thing where he pulls the arm up into his armpit, so whole shoulder you can't lock in the inside right. At this point, whole shoulder you is slowly scooching forward, trying to stand up Takanosho so he can go for this leg trip attempt in a little bit. But Takanosho is still trying to get the outside left on the belt. This is where Takanosho opts to go for a throw using the inside right, pulling the arm. He tries to go for a throw here, which doesn't work because whole shoulder you blocks it with his leg trip. He blocks it with the leg here. And now, you know, from this freeze frame, you could say, Kakenage attempt? No, of course not. Why would you ever go for the Kakenage? <laughs> but this is where, like, we could see whole Shoryu, just again, in this freeze frame, particularly, his footing is, his foot is way too far forward now. And he is going, he's way off balance. Like, you can kind of see his knee is straight, it's locked. That foot is forward and stopping him from, like, he's going to start leaning backwards now because it's so far forward. 
And this is where Takenosho takes advantage of it because Takenosho is just going to push through him this way, kind of using these shoulders to charge forward first. But we're going to see Takenosho. He's actually scooching to the right through whole shoulder, who is completely off balance. Like, the way he's moving right here, his left foot was over here, it's over here now. He is using this right leg and trying to, you know, just move forward, side, through whole shoulder. Like, whole shoulder being off balance is the main reason why Takenosho is allowed to go for this move. And then Takenosho pulls back the foot, recenters himself, whole shoulder still off balance, and... Again, if Ho Shoryu was slightly faster on his footing, this is another potential Takanosho loss with the way he's getting thrown to the side. But this is another very good win for Takanosho here because he gets the crush out. He survives the the parry from Ho Shoryu on the leg and gets the crush down, which is very difficult to do. I mean, just watch this again at full speed. Takenosho shuffling to the side, tries to recenter himself as best as he can, and even though he does get thrown at the same time, he wins, you know? So, again, to me, I see that. I see the uh, Tedder no Fuji match, and I still am a little worried that Takenosho isn't working on his balance as much as he should be. So when I see this law, this win, and when I see the win against Tenno no Fuji, and I still see him getting thrown at the edge, despite the fact that he wins and, you know, the win against Endo, those are a lot of wins that could have gone the other way. Like he could very easily be five and five right now, but instead he's, I'm not going to say he's getting lucky. He's just getting more favorable on these wins. Because it's not luck that Tedder no Fuji stepped out. That was a very good push that forced Tedder no Fuji to step out. But if Tedder no Fuji had a little bit more, uh, you know, wherewithal, he would have been able to keep his footing and then go for the throw. Same, kind of the same thing here. If whole shoulder was a little bit faster on his footing, like, sure, he's not going to be his uncle. But if he was as fast as his uncle, then, you know, he gets his footing and then Takenosho gets thrown. So I think Takenosho just needs to clean up the finish and he will be Ozeki material. He will be an absolute force to be reckoned with. So, you know, this, this is a good win. This is a solid win, but I can 100% see why he doesn't finish it off in the end. His next opponent, Ichi Yamamoto. Let's see. Get a grip on the belt. Kiribayama trying to go for the leg kick. Not going to work. Kiribayama in a very Oh, I'm on day 12. Now. Let's see. Versus Ichi Yamamoto. What match are we on here? Wakamoto Haru and Kiribayama. Oh, that's too late. It was a good match, though. <laughs> Let's see. Koto Eiko, Nishikigi. And... Oh, it's after the half of the hour. Here we go. Ichi Yamamoto. Takenosho. Ichi Yamamoto, we've said it before, his style is very similar to Abi and Daisho, except he's just like a bargain bin version of those two guys. One second. So, I'm like in this head to head, I would be 100% confident putting, you know, a lot of money on Takenosho here. And of course, we do see him get the win, but let's see how he does it. Takenosho not letting himself get slapped down off the initial charge and just charges through Ichi Yamamoto. So, like I mentioned, this is similar to uh, what Abi tried to do. Ichi Yamamoto tries to keep Takenosho at an arm's length right off the Tachi Eye, but immediately goes for the rake to the chest, trying to drag down Takenosho, and again, this is where Takenosho is improving. He doesn't get slapped down here. We see that big step forward to catch himself, you know, foot all the way over here to over here to catch himself, keep his feet under his hips. 
That's the most important thing. Keeping the body square and keeping it centered. Getting that stability. And from here, Ichi Yamamoto, well, now he's the one getting pushed back by, you know, a very typical charge of any sumo wrestler. And even though, again, it is very risky to go for this push here because if Twinkle Toes Ichi Yamamoto is somehow able to, like, leap to the side then Takenosho simply falls flat on his face. But Takenosho gets the push, actually catches himself on the Tawada before he steps out himself, but you know if Ichi Yamamoto managed to get a hop to the side or something, Takenosho would have lost that. So, again, a nice, quick, dirty win doesn't exactly inspire too much confidence, but at this point of the tournament, Takenosho is 10 and 2. And that's something, again, I really hope Takenosho improves on in the future, is just being more stable in his finishes, because this is a very risky finish. This is very, very risky. Like, sure, he's getting two hands straight to the thighs, so that is going to push out Ichi Yamamoto. Like, well, I think his right hand is to the belt or the stomach, and then his left hand is right here on the thigh underneath the belt. Like, that is a very good point of leverage. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, if this hand slips, or if Ichi Yamamoto hops to the side, or, you know, something a little bit goes awry here, then Takenosho just loses. So, in a situation like this, I want him to be more stood up. I want his shoulders to be higher. I want his supati to be square, straight to the chest or the stomach. I want him to have more stability in these wins. Not getting the and that's kind of the easiest way to say it. How are you doing tonight, Sheer? Oh, and we are doing well, Benish. Thank you. Now, day 13, this is where the luck starts to run out. His opponent, Wakataka Kage. Anything? Oh, wow. Good, <laughs> good skip. For 500 bits, hope that for a bunch of the talking to fight is is going. Let's see now. So at this point, these two have already been fighting each other quite a lot. A six to oh, uh, at this point of the tournament, it was a five to seven head to head in favor of Takanosho. But Takanosho has lost the last two times before this match that they fought each other. And they've been fighting each other since the judo division way back in 2018. So this is quite a good rivalry. You know, one of those where they fight each other in judo, and then the next time they see each other is all the way up in, like, Takenosha was a Sekiwake and Wakatakakage was the Maegashita. One. So, you know, really nice storyline between these two. And... To add to this storyline is now Wakataka Kage stopping Takenosho from a Yusho dream. You know, right after Wakataka Kage got his, he's pulling the ladder up from underneath him and is like, ha ha, you can't do it, Takenosho. But that's adding a little bit more drama where there doesn't need to be. Because I'm sure these guys like each other. <laughs> but my point is Wakataka Kage is fresh off of his Yusho. Although this tournament is quite poor. Takenosho, very well on his tournament. But like I said earlier, at least four of those wins could have easily been losses. So he could easily be 6-6 six and six in Wakataka Kage's position. Or he could be where he is right now at 10 and 2. Wakataka nodding him on. Takenosho trying to go for the hand to the face, but that's where he gets the hair grab and he slips forward. So even if Takenosho survived that attack, I think he loses due to the hair grab anyway. But let's just, you know, break down the match as it is. Takenosho goes back to his old style, right hand up high, left hand is getting blocked by the Wakatakakage down low and right. So we can see it, you know, standard Takenosho, hand to the neck, left hand down low, but left hand getting blocked by the Wakataka inside. And from here, Wakataka gets a good, you know, hand to the chest. And Takenosho, you know, grabs the hair there, going for the slapdown attempt. 
And uh, I think, I don't know, you know, anything can happen in the mind of a per- sumo wrestler. Maybe he thought like, oh shit, I grabbed the hair. Let me try to, you know, over adjust or, you know, something along those lines. You know, I- I've done the same thing where it's like, oh shit, I messed up bad. Let me try to over adjust, you know, playing football or bowling or, you know, League of Legends, any kind of competitive type of anything. So it is possible that he might have felt, oh shit, I grabbed the top knot. Uh oh. <laughs> and then just kind of uh, didn't really finish the match. Or maybe I'm reading way too much into it. And from here, he just has a poor performance. But here at Wakataka Kage, we can see him getting a nice grab on that titty right there. As uh, he's on the push forward, and then he transitions into, oh, yep, there it is. Takanosho, that back leg. And you saw him like lean forward, like, ooh, like that back foot slipped way back. Like it should have been here. It slips maybe a foot away. And this is where Wakataka Based. knows to just let him fall forward. Now, and, forward and not really much to break Wakataka. down right there, but uh, Takanosho. Even without that hair grab, I think it's just no stability on that back right foot. Slipped forward. Purple Nurple is a good Kimarite. It might have been the hair pull before that, but either way, Takanosho does fall. Yeah, uh, really just didn't show up today. Not really much else to break down about that match. He simply did not show up. And this is where we get into, you know, day 13, the race ends. Teru no Fuji, Takenosho, and Sada no Umi are all on top. And now we're thinking, could there be a playoff? Could Teru no Fuji lose to one of the Ozeki? Is anything going to happen, really? And this is where we get to see Takanosho versus Kiribayama in a very one-sided head-to-head. -head. Coming into this match, it was 11 to or 10 to 1 in favor of Takanosho. Let me see. This is Meisei. Oh, there's Takanosho. Oh, wait, no, that's a replay. <laughs> There we go. Tochi Noshin getting his Kachi Koshi. That was a shocker. Let's see. Kiribayama versus Takanosho. Takanosho needs the win to stay in the race. Kiribayama wants it just to get double digits and possibly make a push for Ozeki. So what happens here in this incredibly one-sided 10 to 1 head to head in favor of Takanosho? Is nine. Takanosho goes double hands high. Kiribayama tries to parry it, but now Takanosho opting for Yotsuzumo, trying to get the left hand inside, right hand trying to block, trying to go inside himself, and Kiribayama simply slips forward. So again, going back to what I said earlier about that slippery dohyo, a lot of unfortunate wins and losses coming out because of those slips. That is just part of the game, you know? There are different oil patterns in bowling. There are different field conditions for soccer and cricket and football and golf and whatever else. There are different dohyo conditions depending on the basho and sometimes slipperiness is something you just have to you just have to deal with. But before the slip, let's see what happens here. We see right off the Tachi Eye, even though it is a bit blurry because the cameraman likes to think he's in the WWE, we see two hands up high around the head for Takanosho. And we can kind of make out like, eh, and eh, right there. And Kiribayama's right hand trying to go low to try to parry. And from there, Takanosho pushes Kiribayama away as Kiribayama tries to pull for this arm and go for a slap to the face it looks like Takanosho I mean this just does not look very good it looks like he's flailing his arms a little bit like I, I don't think I've seen a position of an arm being like this on purpose but this left hand coming down is a good attempt at the belt 
And he does get the hand on the stomach, but Kitibayama parrying with this outside right again. Like, God, look at his biceps. Holy shit. And this is where uh, Kitibayama catches Takanosho, and now Takanosho, uh, as Kitibayama tries to parry him again, dives straight for the inside left. And you can see that was a very good dive. He, like, ducked his head and then just wham that arm right down for the belt in there. So this is a pretty good grip for Takanosho. Good stable footing, pushing forward little by little. He can't really do much with that right hand because Kitibayama is trying to block it as Kitibayama is trying to wriggle himself away so that that left hand inside doesn't actually make it to the belt. So now we see favorable Yotsuzumo for Takanosho once more. He's in a good position. He's leaning a little too far forward for my liking, but you know, Kitibayama doesn't have too much room behind him to really take advantage of a pull attack. So this could work out for Takanosho here. And as they do stabilize a bit, it is Kitibayama trying to block that inside left and trying to block the right hand, whatever it may be doing over here. So Kitibayama is 100% on the defensive while uh, Takanosho is on the offensive in this stance. And we can get a better camera angle over here. Takanosho has this right arm you know, wrapped underneath trying to go for the belt. It's kind of grabbing the stomach though as that left hand inside is trying to make it for the belt as well. So going for double inside against Kiribayama like this, he doesn't have a bad position here. He has a good enough position that he can go for this. And so it's kind of like a, you might as well. And in keeping that right hand inside, he's putting Kitibayama in this awkward position where now that Kitibayama is trying to move forward, he's kind of standing himself up. You saw he brought his feet underneath him, raised his hips so he can try to get more leverage under this arm and, you know, just try to break this odd grip that he's succumbed to. This is where, actually... If I can, if if I could go back frame by frame, I would. But uh, it might not be a slip from Kiribayama there. Watch this leg. This leg is going to get tangled up with Takanosho's right forward leg right here. Like uh, we can go frame by frame forward. So that left leg from Kiribayama is going to get tangled up in that right leg in just a moment here. Excuse the fact that I'm going frame by frame, but I feel like this is important to see. Like they kind of clack knees here. Kiribayama, like I said, stands up. Taka no show. Some artifacting right there. Yeah, Kiribayama brings that left leg forward. I think what Kiribayama tried to do was go for the leg trip from behind, but Takanosho brought his right foot backwards. You can kind of see Takanosho's bringing his foot back ever so slightly to try to get it up underneath him, and Kiribayama goes for a big step, and I can't really tell if he's trying to wrap it around... He is. So he's trying to trip Takanosho from behind here. So it's a failed Kimarite attempt from Kiribayama. I see. And yeah, you can see it very clearly right here. Kiribayama tries to get the leg trip from behind on Takanosho as he pushes forward. But Takanosho takes the step back and drags Kiribayama with him. Yeah, see, look, Takanosho is bringing this left foot back and taking, like, he, he's holding this leg hostage now. He's taking Kiribayama's leg with him. It's going. <laughs> so this is, that was a very needed camera angle we needed on this match. Holy cow. So Kiribayama stumbles forward going for the leg trip attempt and Takanosho parries it perfectly. Ooh. A really good win from Takanosho. An ambitious attempt from Kiribayama right there. But that was a very 
you know, that was a very interesting way to end the match. At first, I thought it was just Takanosho taking advantage of the slip. Because, I mean, look at it at full speed. Like, we can take it from the middle of the match here. If you look at it at full speed, it looks like he just slips forward. But now that I've noticed that leg, you can see Kiribayama tries to get the leg wrapped around and just gets dragged. That was very, very good from Takanosho right there to completely parry the attack. Wow. That was really good. Like, actually. <laughs> so now, at this point, day 14, it is Teruno Fuji and Takanosho fighting for the Yusho. And we kind of knew that it was most likely going to be Takanosho versus Sada no Umi. And then Teruno Fuji versus... Mitake Yumi because they usually put it Ozeki versus Yokozuna on day 15. And, uh, you know, that was something I covered in the Teno Fuji video that uh, you can, if you're watching here on YouTube, you can find probably uh, on my channel if you just click on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's one of the more recent uploads I have, so be sure to check that one out if you haven't seen it. If you're watching here on Twitch, then be sure to go to my YouTube channel in case you miss any of the other sumo action, or if you joined the stream late, be sure to go and follow all of my YouTubes. So anyway, there was the possibility that we could have seen Teru no Fuji versus uh, Sada no Umi, and, you know, Sada no Umi could force the playoff, and... You know, it would be a three-way playoff, but the Sumo Association wants to avoid playoffs because they don't want to step on NHK's toes and be like, uh-oh, we're going to run into your six o'clock news. Oh, no. We're going to anger the five old people that aren't watching Sumo right now. But uh, we do see Sada no Umi versus Takanosho. Sada no Umi needed the win to, you know, drag Takanosho down for the Jun Yu show. Teru no Fuji basically just needed to win. And uh, if Takanosho would have won, it would have forced a playoff where Takanosho versus Teru no Fuji would have happened again. But that, unfortunately, is not how things go down. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. So, Taka no Sho versus Sada no Umi. It was a dead even 4 and 4 in the head to head coming into this day. So, it was, you know, whatever the result may be, it was likely it would go either way. Let's see. But of course, we were behind Taka no Sho. We are Taka no Sho fans in this house. We wanted Taka no Sho to win, possibly force the playoff to get his first Yu show. But we will quickly see that that is not how it happens. Takanosho getting grabbed double inside by Sada no Umi and thrown at the edge, losing in the exact same fashion that he was just barely winning by the entire tournament. It all re-culminates into old Takanosho at it again. Gives up the double inside very early and then at the very end gets thrown before he gets the push out and it is quite tragic but you know perhaps the pressure was on his shoulders perhaps he was panicking we don't know what his mindset was and we possibly never will know what his mindset was unless he wins another you show and is like yeah i was pretty nervous the first time but uh you know the second time around i knew what i had to do sadano umi Right off the Tachi eye, Takanosho doesn't go for, you know, the usual right hand high, left hand to the ribcage. He kind of just gives up double inside straight away to Sada no Umi, which is almost always a death knell. And this poor woman can't even stand to watch it because she knows what's happening right now. Taking the charge, Takanosho. Takanosho gives up that double inside. And from here, he's trying to shift his hips so he can, you know, try a throw attempt maybe to just throw Sada no Umi off balance enough that he might be able to recover from here but Sada no Umi is keeping his stance solid in the same way that we talk about all Yotsuzumo guys who keep their stances solid he's just Yotsuzumo looking fine Kristen. here and even though he does get up on one foot this is where Takanosho thinks okay now I can use this 
you know, left hand to the rib cage for a good solid push. We are chest to chest. He Umi lost the inside left grip, and now Takanosho is kind of locking it in with this elbow here. So Umi can't really do much with that inside right, but it is still an inside right. It's still in the way. And from here, he does manage it to wiggle it back onto the belt. Takanosho pushing forward, and again, you can see he's put himself in this position where his shoulders our way off he's leaning this way so he's going to be thrown this way and this was something i covered earlier in this stream slash video forward? pushes forward and he goes too far forward way too ambitious on the push gets thrown easy throw he puts himself off balance in such a way that sadana umi takes advantage of it and you know he could have gotten lucky here if he stayed alive long enough but he does not he gets thrown out of the ring oh, the into the Gyoji and Sadano Umi gets the win to prevent the Takanosho Yusho dreams. So overall, Takanosho losing in that same way that I said he would lose. Takanosho could have easily been eight and seven this tournament or even seven and eight if all of those other matches just didn't happen to go his way at the edge and that is really what he needs to do he needs to clean up the finish it doesn't matter if your tachi eyes are good if you can't get the win then you can't get the win it's that simple and i hope he learns from this basho and this match in particular that even though he does a lot of the time get the better push, he needs to be able to keep himself stable enough to finish the job. Because if he does, he gets the U show. If he doesn't, he goes like six and nine again, or four and eleven again. And that is a consistency that he needs to work on, and that is a consistency that he really can he he's shown us that he can do it. Now he just needs to finish it. And, you know, he does have time ahead of him. He is 27 years old. Shit, I'm older than Takanosho. So he has time ahead of him to continue improving, to, you know, change. He's 27. His birthday's in November. I know, I thought he was like 29. <laughs> But no, Takanosho, very close, but so, so far away. Hello, Portal fan. How are you doing? You've caught us at the end of this, so let me say some closing statements for the YouTube side before I switch to just chilling for Twitch. So thank you very much for watching this breakdown of Takanosho, where, again, it easily could have been like 7 and 8, but he does end up going 11 and 4 very impressive scoreline probably not going to go that high up on the bonzuke which uh i did play the bonzuke guessing game i will be covering that after the bonzuke comes out which is going to be next week so look forward to that or rather i will be covering my bonzuke guesses on day zero of the basho so be sure to tune into my stream twitch.tv slash leo dickinson vt one day before the start of the tournament because i will be doing the day zero preview show where i will talk about who i think is gonna win who i think is gonna fall and of course who our pick for the U show is also, be sure to tune into my stream, twitch.tv slash Leo Dickens and VT, on Friday, June 24th, for my two years of VTubing anniversary stream. I will be streaming for 12 plus hours all day. We're going to open up some Hollow Live Weiss Schwartz boxes, trying to chase that autographed card. We're going to play some League of Legends with viewers and fans. We are going to play other party games, and then we're going to cap off the night with some karaoke and then getting drunk to the Gaki no Tsukai No Laughing Las Vegas Challenge. So be sure to tune into all of that. And if you don't care about any of that, just be sure to tune in for that sumo tournament. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you cats later.